Welcome to the award-winning Friday Night Sports Zone, brought to you by Generations Physical Therapy. Get ready for all the plays, all the scores, and some great fan action. Now, here's Anna Tarullo and Jake Siegel. Well, welcome to the Friday Night High School Sports Zone, guys. I'm Anna Trullo alongside Jake Siegel. Welcome to week four. Week four is here, Anna. And kind of as you mentioned, before we start tonight, we know this has been a very emotional week for everyone in the West Virginia high school football world following the death of Roan County player Alex Miller. Now, Roan was off tonight, but it was an emotional game for Clay County as it was the first time for the Panthers, Panthers to be back on the field since last week's outing at Roan County. Um, big rivalry at Hoover as they take on Clay County in the Battle of the Elk. A lot of excitement there. We pick this one up here. Um, Clay County will start with the ball. Number two gets the snap and sends it off to number five for a score. Big score of the game, first score of the game. Now Panthers coming up here after this student section is loud they're excited it's Friday with another combo number to two to number five for another Clay County touchdown right there he runs it in and the Panthers finish it off with a two-point conversion after that you gotta love those get a little extra looks like number five's got 14 points there. heck yeah Hoover now on the play number nine with the pass to 13 coming up after that and we'll see some great defensive play there almost picked off by Clay County, wow, it's so close to being picked off, but the battle still continues with a small comeback. And then Clay County wins this one 36 to 27. A good one right there, a good one here as well. On a capital, all about honoring Alex Love Miller that. tonight. Miller there in spirit, the team holding up his jersey and the coin toss. They even broke out the Alex Miller hammer, and Capital used it to their advantage. First quarter, Evan Landers going to go deep with the football, and he's going to connect on the home run ball, and it becomes 7 0 Capital. Pretty good pitch and catch right Not there. Not bad. In the second quarter, more of the same as it's more from the capital offense. The Cougars would start to roll as Landers is going to get another shot at it. Not going to go as deep this time in the air, but still goes to the air. And after we see the Cougar himself make mm -hmm. an appearance, it's going to be Chance Knox, a guy who flew under the radar so far this season. But he's going to come up here with a big catch. And, and as we're going to see, he's going to bust his way into the end zone and capital will roll in this game 35-13. Here's Chance Knox. Believe it or not, Anna, wow. three straight wins. I believe for the it. the Cougars, they're hot right now. Team to watch. They've Moving been forward. great after that big comeback two weeks ago. They've really been on a roll. Now the Ironton Tigers travel across the river into Kentucky to face off against the Ashland Tomcats. Tonight's game was also Ashland's homecoming, so let's get straight into it. In the first quarter, Ashland with possession. Jake Gregg hands the ball off to Keontae Pittman. Pittman runs straight through the line, going right to the defense for the Tomcats. First down. Tomcat showing some momentum early in the game. Still in the first quarter here coming up next play. Ironton will have possession. Quarterback Gage Sayers is looking to throw. He makes the connection to Kyle Howell. Howell runs out of bounds, making the Tigers first down. Both teams showing off their defensive skills. And that's when, that one, that's exactly what you love in a rivalry game. Um, it's really tough defense there. That was a great the catch. Quarter, that great mention. catch. Ironton has possession to here. Gage Sayers again with the handoff. This time handing off to Seth Fawson. Fawson attempts to go around the defense, but is shut down by the Tomcats. Strong D. Very excellent decent tonight. Defense tonight. Tonight's game started out neck and neck, but Ashland took the W after Blake Hester short a three yard touchdown into overtime. Ashland wins their fifth straight. Final score 16 to 10. All right, South Charleston looking to rebound following a loss last week. Tonight's opponent, Spring Valley, who also looking to rebound from a, lo a loss a week ago. Down 13 nothing in the second. Black Eagles quarterback Trey Dunn getting crushed right here. And that would force a punt with good field position. Timberwolves quarterback David Livingston rolls out, takes the ball all the way down to the one yard line. Good situational awareness, Adam. Mm -hmm. They would go up a, sc a score. They would score to go up 19 nothing. Now with less than two minutes left remaining before the half, the Timberwolves would go for more as tight end Corbin Page bullies his way into the end zone following this reception. Look at that guy go. Wow. He would not be That's brought truck. down. That's a truck with no brakes. <laughs> down 26 nothing. The Black Eagles would try to score some points before the half, but the connection mm. just isn't there. The final score in this one. Spring Valley all over South Charleston, 33 to 6 to find. Wow. Now we've got plenty more games to get to here on the Friday Night Sports Zone. A busy week, number four, Jake. That's right. When we return, the GW Patriots looking for back to back wins, hosting St. Albans, plus Wayne and Winfield do battle. We'll have the highlights coming up after the break.